Hey everyone, thanks very much for joining me again at Ready, Set, Test. Today's video or videos will be about this, the Arcbird Autopilot 2.0. It's an OSD and autopilot system. And as it says on the box, autopilot integrated high quality display, OSD and AAT airborne module. Wow, that's a lot. And to be honest, it does a lot. I've been using it for about two months now, had more than 20 flights with it, and every single flight has been a test flight to check one thing or another. And now I think finally I'm ready to make some some videos about this, explaining the settings, the connections, and uh, the small little uh, troubleshooting issues that anybody might have with it. So if you have this unit, just had it, or thinking about having one, I would seriously suggest to stick with me on all these videos because... Uh, yeah, uh, I think there's a lot of useful stuff in it that you would need. This is the box that it comes in, by the way, so we'll put that to the side. <clears throat> and just off the side is our unit. This is the Arcbit unit as installed in this blunt nose Versa. I know it's a very rudimentary belt. It's a scratch belt by me. That's the video receiver over there. That's the RC receiver. And there, right in the center, is the Arcbird Autopilot System. Now, it seems like there's a lot of wire streaking about. It's not as complicated as you might think. So, let me pull the system from here. It's only taped in. And then I will take you through the connections real quick. So, this first part is about the hardware. Stay tuned. I'll just be back with the autopilot system out. Now, the unit is just about out of the place where it was pasted. And as you can see, it's the 2.0, the one in the in the black plastic casing. There's a ver version before that as well, which was quite a big success among people. And a lot of the users really complained about this new version. They thought that it wasn't very good. So uh, I wanted to put this out there and put my experience and all the, uh, the, the functions that I have tested so far. But from the outlook of it, this is the unit that you're looking at. Now, this will also be the top of the unit. And as this arrow in here dictates, this will also be the front. The front of the unit will be facing in that direction. Now I will be moving my camera a little bit. So excuse the shaking. As you can see, there's your awkward unit. Right, let's talk about connections. Let me move the camera and we will talk about connections. Okay, this is as close as I can get without messing up the focus, so let's talk connections. The back side of the unit has 1 to 7 out and 1 to 7 in. These are basically servo slots. I will come to that just in a bit. Let's go forward. This is where all the auxiliary hardware goes. Some important stuff. Let's start from this side. CUR is current sensor. That's where your current sensor will go. It ships to you with a 3S current sensor, although I have purchased from them the 4S version of the current sensor because I only use 4S batteries. This will power all your auxiliary stuff, your camera, your video transmitter and whatnot, even if they don't work on a 4S voltage and much lower than that. So once you plug that in, Arcbird will then regulate the voltage for you. The one after that is jumper. That port is only used, right now it's being used as a part of the 4S, but with the 3S there will be a jumper in there. 12V is your video power, right now that port is empty because it's getting power from here. That's if you were putting a separate battery for your video power, you would use that port. The one after that is V in, that's video in, that's the line coming from your camera. And then video out, that's the line going to your video transmitter. And coming back in here, right in the center, there's a different plug from all of the rest. That goes to your GPS. The GPS is in here. It's a slightly bulky unit. It's not heavy though, but it has very good performance when it comes to satellite. From a cold boot, first time in the day when you start it, it will take up to about a minute to acquire enough satellites for this to work. And that's, that's quite good, as long as you've got an unrestricted view up towards the sky, of course. And then after that, you have RX, that's to update receiver, TX 
to update transmitter. I believe that has something to do with the Arcbird 433 system. AR for airspeed sensor. This little thing up front. And this is one of the great functions with this autopilot. It does airspeed sensing for you, which means throttle is managed automatically upwind or downwind. That's another good function with this that a lot of the USD systems of this price point usually don't have. And in the end, you have PPM. You can use a PPM receiver or a PPM RX with this. I am working on the PPM part at the moment, I must say. Uh, and once I do, I'll put another video of the PPM working with that as well. Now, here is another thing. There's a little caveat in here. You can use RSSI on this. You can take RSSI out of, say, an Immersion RC uh, receiver or any other receiver and put it in this. If you look at the manual, the RSSI port is the port for airspeed sensor. So once you plug RSSI into it, the airspeed sensor wouldn't work. But not to despair, you can take the airspeed sensor out and put it in the RX port, and then it will work as the airspeed sensor. Do not use a V splitter and plug them, plug the RSSI and the airspeed sensor both into one slot. They won't work. If you're using RSSI, plug into AR and plug your ASP sensor into RX and it will work just as it did. Now let's get down to the back end of the unit. Out is where the connections to your servos go. It doesn't matter how many servos you have on your aeroplane, as long as they're within seven, they will go from here. These wires are going directly to your servo. So from one to seven, and it's aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder, so on and so forth. So it starts from aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder. This is very clearly mentioned on the manual, but it's almost AETR system, which is, if I believe, is an FR Sky protocol or a Futaba protocol for channels. Okay, it's not a spectrum protocol, it's a Futaba protocol. So aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder, right? These will go, so throttle will go to your ESC, aileron and elevator will go to your receivers, to your servos, obviously. Now in the input, you have channels coming in from your receiver. So number one would be aileron, number two would be elevator, number three would be throttle, number four would be rudder, which in this case is empty as you can see because this doesn't have a rudder, right? So these will go to the corresponding channels on your receiver. Aileron, elevator, throttle, no rudder. And then number five and number six are very important one. Number five is the two position switch and number six is the three position switch. This is so important, I can't even stress enough because without this you won't be able to control the modes on your unit. Number five will go into obviously our auxiliary channel channel number five on your receiver and channel number six on your receiver will take and number six. But you have to make sure that for channel number five, you have a two position switch available on your transmitter. And for channel number six, you have a three position switch available on your transmitter. Almost all transmitters have them, but you have to make sure that's the case. Case in point, let me show you my Futaba transmitter. Right, there we go. This is a three position switch for channel 6 and this is a two position switch for channel 5. Make sure you have these available in your transmitter. And once you connect these all up your hardware section will be ready. Now let me show you a little schematic in here about the two and three position switch because it has confused quite a lot of people. Okay this here is a piece of paper that I've basically drawn. It's a rough sketch but I want you to to make sense of it for the for the people that find it confusing. This is your two position switch, all right? And I will take my radio with me right here. Let's just say this is your two position switch. This one here, by the way, that's the two position switch. In position two, one of the two positions, it will always be manual control, okay? You can also call that a master switch, which means doesn't matter what your arc bird is doing, 
if you flip the two position switch to that position, to position two or one, depending on your radio, it will go into manual. Your airplane, your control. But the second position of the two position switch will take you into arc bird mode or arc bird control. Now, which control in which mode should you be in while you're in that switch depends on your three position switch on your radio. Okay, position one, position two, position three. One of the positions, two of the positions, sorry, are set and permanent, non-changeable. One of them is RTH, the other one is AST. But there's a third one that can be customized. If you can see right here, a third position can be customized. And you can customize it with waypoint, uh, hover, uh, lock height, lock direction, lock height and direction, you can or gyro. You can choose any of these functions and put it onto one of the three position switches. But two of them will always be permanent and set. And remember, just as I've drawn these arrows in here, at any point, doesn't matter which function you are in, if you flick two position switch back to the master switch, it will override all of these and go back into manual control. Now, this might not make a lot of sense, uh, but if it helps, pause the video and look at this connection in here. Now, going back to the ArcBird, this video only serves the purpose about the connections and the hardware connections of the unit, what to connect to what. The next video coming up will show you how to boot the system, start it and go into a menu. The video after that would be a detailed breakdown of the video, of the menu, sorry. And then there will be a fourth video after that talking about FAQs, troubleshoots and the things that you might come across while you are using this system and how to take care of them and how to solve them. Now, before I go ahead, I must say that this unit has an antenna tracking system built in inside it. It has the antenna tracking or the AAT unit in there. I don't have an ArcBed antenna tracker, so I can't tell you how it works, but it has the antenna tracking facility built in. Right, stay tuned for the next video where we will be booting up this system and giving it a start. Thanks very much.